Well, I, I gotta say that I'm ecstatic about this one, but it's just, when Maryland beat Penn State, yeah. it was something for all the older Maryland fans. Yeah. When Maryland came here and beat Texas, it was something for all Maryland fans from all generations. A generational victory today. I'll take that. This is Intern Mason. I'm Wayne Viner for Red Turtle Productions. It has been a great day here in Austin. We'll see you back in College Park. Good afternoon from College Park, Bird Stadium. Well, it's Maryland Stadium once again. Today it's the spring game. I'm Wayne Viner. This is Intern Mason for Red Turtle Productions. Bruce is away today. Uh, Mason, score still up there. It's 40-35 offense over the defense. What's your primary takeaway from spring football 2017? Maryland can run the football. That's what you got to take away. Caleb Henderson, the supposed starting quarterback for the year, did not play today. And Lolo Harrison is still or even more explosive than he was last season. Oh, he had one cut back run. It was a one. Here to talk about it, as well as other Maryland topics, is TurpTalk.com's Wayne Viner. Wayne, welcome in. How are you? Well, hey, Evans well. is a big time college football guy. He was an SEC athletic director with Georgia. So he's got the experience. He led the search committee that brought in D.J. Durkin. So actually, he is a logical person to take that job. How's the speed of the game translated from being an Alabama Gatorade Player of the Year to the Big Ten? It changed a lot. I'll say it changed a lot. Like last year, everything was just going fast for me. And like this year, I feel like it's like everything's coming down, moving slow. Like. Uh, with the weight training program and everything they do here, do you feel faster than when you came in? You're obviously bigger. The last time we saw you on camera was in August. You're a lot bigger now. Yes, sir. I feel way faster, way bigger. And now joining us at the break, and now joining us to break down the Terps win, we have Wayne Viner. Viner covers all things Maryland sports for TerpTalk.com. Um, lacrosse, you're from Dallas, played at Dallas Jesuit. What's it like there compared to a lacrosse state like Maryland? Um, you know, in Texas, lacrosse is still growing. We haven't had it as long as, um, as... Daryl K. Royal Memorial Stadium as Maryland rolls base. What's the score? 51-41 Terps, and I called it. Oh, you did. You said Maryland was going to win. Maryland won. You, you had about 35. We scored 51. They asked me in the press box what I think it would take for Maryland to win. I said 50. It ended up being 51. Ty Johnson, 132 yards on the ground. We have DJ Moore, 133 through the air. I think Kasim was fantastic coming in for an injured piggy. What's your play of the game? My play of the game has to be when Kasim Hill threw a corner route to DJ Moore to get Maryland a huge first down. And Kasim Hill showed a lot today. He came in right when this place got going again, and he shut it down. Uh, he did. He switched the momentum. We several tweets out there. You got to change the momentum. Kasim Hill does that. He was spectacular. You know. Tavon Jacobs looked good as the second receiver. The defense, man, were they hitting today. Yeah, you really saw that suddenness that DJ and the defensive staff has been talking about for months now. Everybody has been talking about what happened in this game for months, and it finally came true. So Bruce Posner back in Baltimore watching, of course, with great interest. We get on the field here in Texas, and we win. Uh, you see pictures of players jumping around. We got Jake Funk on that last touchdown. Just, just a, a season, maybe a life-altering event today. I'm happy. How about you? Well, I'm really looking forward to some actual basketball games. I know it starts up with Penn State on the second, at Michigan State on the fourth. It's time for some conference play and, and end the cupcake season. Hey, do you like the ugly sweater? No, but when we were walking around, a lot of people seemed to, so I have to give it something. <laughs> All right. Well, this I like I like Todd's more. Todd, like, well, we'll see Todd's in the and second. As we like to say, the score is now off the scoreboard and the time is back on, so it's time to go. So good evening and happy holidays from the Red Turtle Turp Talk crew. This is Wayne Viner, intern Mason, Todd Carton, on Rev Todd, and in the background, Jordan behind the camera. Thank you, thank you to everybody for watching. Ugly sweaters rule. Ugly, we have to get Mason a sweater. And good evening from Xfinity Center, where Maryland takes it 75 to 50.
So it's uh, at Michigan State on Thursday, Iowa. Here is an eight o'clock Sunday night. Eight o'clock Sunday night. Well, hopefully there won't be traffic for that one. And what's tomorrow night? Tomorrow night. What's tonight? Tomorrow night is Turp Talk, that's brought right. to you by Coons Ford on Security Boulevard. Six. Dennis will be on, and that's on 1300 CBS Sports Radio at 6, 6 p.m. p.m. 6 p.m. as it always is. Sports Maven on Saturday. And unfortunately, due to the massive choke by the Ravens, yeah. uh, we will not have it in the nest this week. Stop right. smiling, Mason. Take it home, Mason. Oh, I'm going to smile. Because last, last year, my team did that. And all I, I didn't give year. you any grief. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that happened. I was very kind. <laughs> Oh, what a great afternoon from Foxborough. Good evening. Good afternoon from College Park. DJ Dirk and Arrow opens with the win. I want to see a team that, that looked excited to play, had great enthusiasm, um, and just, just belief in one another. Great win for us, a great way to start. And I'm really excited for our guys and our players. Here at Xfinity Center, where Maryland beats Michigan 86 82. This is a Northwestern Mutual Post Game Show. Joining Bruce Bowser, Scott Eddie Graham, we've got superstar point guard Reggie Jackson, we're number 15 for the trips on Wayne Bynum. For Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, this is Wayne Viner. That's intern Mason for Red Turtle Productions. At Ford Field. Good evening from Royal Farms Arena. I'm always going to call it the Baltimore Arena. Civic Center. The Civic Center. As Bruno San Martino used to say, the Civic Center. <laughs> Good afternoon from gray and damp Happy Valley. This is Wayne Viner. This is intern Mason. <laughs> And welcome back to Inside Press Box. Given the injuries and what we saw early from Maryland football, what are the program's realistic short-term expectations? Here to talk about it, as well as other Maryland topics, is TerpTalk.com's Wayne Viner. Wayne, welcome in. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Good. And we will talk about all that stuff, but we have to start right at the top if we're going to talk about Maryland athletics, and that is with the athletic director, Kevin Anderson, who's basically on leave. He's on a six-month sabbatical. The news was kind of convoluted last week. What do you know about the situation? Well, all I have are the rumors that I'm sure everybody else has heard, which is that he looked at another job, he had a falling out with Wallace Lowe, and he had his last day of work was in late September, and he's been on leave since then, and the rest of the rumor mill has Kevin Plank stepping in to make this a smoother transition, allowing for the sabbatical. And I got a text, a tweet from uh, Kevin that he was at UCLA with his family over the weekend, last weekend, so he seems to be doing well. And just a quick follow-up, Damon Evans has kind of taken over, at least in the interim. Is he a um, logical candidate to replace him, or are they going to open it up? Well, Damon Evans is a big-time college football guy. He was an SEC athletic director with Georgia, so he's got the experience. He led the search committee that brought in D.J. Durkin, so actually he is a logical person to take that job. But I think with Maryland's history and how they have committees and there's a lot of people who have input, they're probably going to look somewhere else before they make uh, an official offer to make Evans the permanent AD. Do we think, though, that Kevin Anderson at the end of his sabbatical is definitely finished there, or do you see any scenario? And I know you're saying you just know what you're hearing, but, I mean, is it pretty much considered a fait accompli that he's gone? Uh, Didn't uh, seem uh, like that to me. As a Maryland, long, long-term Maryland yeah. fan, and knowing the history of Maryland, he is, to me, he is gone. Okay. All right. That's your opinion. That Maryland football, the Eastern Division of the Big Ten, is probably the toughest division in all of sports, professional or college. And we've seen Maryland, you know, start off fast, but then get destroyed once the conference schedule begins, the Ohio States, the Michigans, et cetera. 
Is there a glimmer of hope, and if so, what is it? Well, there is a glimmer of hope, and that is that D.J. Durkin has been recruiting well on a national level. Now, many of those young men have played. So last year they played 17 freshmen. This year I believe they played 11 or 12 freshmen. So our 18, 19-year-old freshmen are playing against the Big Ten's fifth-year seniors who've been in those weight training programs and really know how to play ball. So if you're going to put a, a group of 18-year-old against a group of 22-year-olds, you are going to get what you see. This is not basketball. You can't just recruit one player and have it change your future. So I think you're going to have to let DJ get these recruits and let it run four or five years. So maybe 2019 is a better litmus test for a moment. Maryland was ahead of itself when it went to Texas. We had two quarterbacks who could play. They both played. They both played well. And then in the Maryland tradition, they, they both hurt. <laughs> there you so, go. So no true. Question about it. Let's, let's slide over to basketball for a moment. That's a, a, a program that's been at a higher echelon level for a longer period of time. Is the jury out? We know that uh, Mark Turgeon can, can recruit his butt off, okay? But is the jury still out on whether he is a top-tier coach of good talent? That is a great question. Uh, many in the fan base question the coaching, the moves, how you end up with a, a fairly talented team where Mello gets the ball. And there's a picture of Mello behind Gary on the wall here. He's that famous, but at the end of the game, it can't be a one-man gang, and that's what Maryland devolved to. So yeah, there's a little bit of question of how this offense is going to run. It wasn't really on the defensive side. It's on the offensive side that Maryland has had questions. Uh, you're looking at a situation for this season where there's one point guard, which Anthony Cowan, very well recruited, highly thought of, and uh, Kevin Herter, and then a Baltimore product is the backup, which is uh, Daryl Morse will be the backup of point guard. All right. We appreciate your coming in. You've done a fantastic job. Thank you. Turp my buddy com. Bruce Posner. Thank you. Get that thing moving, terptalk.com, and Thanks, doing Wayne. his shows with us. Thank you very much, Wayne. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And now joining us at the break, and now joining us to break down the Terps win, we have Wayne Viner. Viner covers all things Maryland sports for TerpTalk.com. Now, Wayne, we had a big one, a must-needed win before the conference started. Randy Edsel after to go with Caleb Rowe. Now, do you think that was a good decision? He played well. It was a good decision. Uh, Caleb Rowe, known as a gunslinger, he got the ball out quickly. I think he won 21 for 33. The four touchdowns, this is the first time Maryland's done that since Danny O'Brien was the quarterback, so it's been a while. Uh, sometimes you have to wonder why he didn't get in maybe a little earlier, but Caleb was coming off a knee injury, the second ACL operation. So he looked good. It gives Maryland a chance to get the ball down the field and win the game. Right. Now, this was a big win because it was the last non-conference game of the season. Next week, we have that rivalry game at West Virginia, and the conference schedule is brutal, especially starting out. How big of a win was this just for confidence? Well, for confidence, well, uh, we called it earlier today on the radio. We said it was judgment day. You had to win today. There aren't that many easy wins in the Big Ten. West Virginia's a tough game. Then you have Ohio State there. Uh, you follow that up with Penn State here. I mean, it, it just, right? yeah, it's in Baltimore. It just gets harder. So you needed your sixth win. You're two and one now. West Virginia's two and zero. Oh. They beat Liberty, and I think it was Georgia State or Georgia Southern. But West Virginia, Maryland's always a big game. Okay. Now speaking of West Virginia, our foe just over the border, up in the mountains in Morgantown. It's obviously a regional rivalry. Yeah. People here get really hyped up for that matchup. Yeah. You're from here, so you know all about it. Tell me a little bit what that rivalry means to the area, and then also give me kind of Maryland's chances of getting a win. Well, it means a lot. It's our only real backyard rival. With the way the schedule broke down, Maryland going from the ACC uh, to the Big Ten, you lose some of those rivalries, and West Virginia's a big rival. I remember all the great years when Don Nealon was the coach at WVU, Rich Rodriguez. Uh, Maryland had their days in the sun, too. Boomer Esiason, the Frigian era, and Maryland going to a bowl game against West Virginia and beating them. So it's a real rivalry, and these are the types of games that, that make you pick one school or another and say, I'm loyal to that. I'm a turf, but I definitely respect uh, those who root for West Virginia. Well, we're looking forward to that matchup, and I thank you again for joining us. Now, it should be... Right to the uh, Hoosiers and the back deep. 
for Indiana's return specialist Devontae Williams, number 97. Danny Sutton tees it up. It's a windy one here. This is Wayne Viner along with the intern Mason Viner at Maryland. Ostrick, Indiana, three and four Terrapins really need this one today, and uh, we are ready to go here at 3.30. Start in College Park. Sutton has purchased the ball to 35, and the right leg kick high in the air. It looks about five yards deep in the end zone. Williams is there. He'll take a knee. That'll be first down at the 25 for your Indiana Hoosiers. For Indiana, starting a quarterback today is Peyton Ramsey. Mason, what kind of quarterback is this kid? Well, Peyton Ramsey came into the year as known as a rushing quarterback. He is now involved into the Indiana passing offense that threw for 450 yards against Ohio State earlier this season. Now, last year, Indiana and Maryland, it was a slugfest game where Richard DeLegau was the backup for the end of the day, saw significant action. One of the big targets for the end offense is a wide receiver, which is Simi Cobbs. He wears number one for the Hoosiers. One back, three receivers to the right. Ramsey back, number three, floats over the middle, it's complete to number 80. Ian Thomas with the catch, and that's out to the 28, 29 yard line will be second and five. All the way up to the 30. Maryland is bright yellow uniforms with the black pants. Ramsey, he keeps it. He throws it to the left side. 25 Scott is across the 35 for a first down at the reception by Luke Timmian. That's a play that we saw earlier this season against Texas. Maryland is eventually able to stop it. They'll make a quick adjustment against that. Inner side corner is Jackson. The far side is I.M. Tito Ross, number 17. Safeties are Woods and Savage. Ramsey drops to the 27. Throws the cross to a receiver. Cutting left to right. He's got it out to 45. Once he has number 25, Luke Timian. Tuck's trying to bring early pressure. Doesn't get to the quarterback. Gives him the easy quick slant across the middle. Uh, working it right in. M.B. Tanya, Savon Walker, and... Oh, King Kingsley Opara up front. Indiana runs at number 20 with the carry over the left side. <clears throat> gain of... What do you got there, I'm going to go with the gain of three to the Indiana 47-yard line, first to ten. That's a first down, 13.48 to go. Ramsey, three receivers again to the right. There is no tight end, one receiver there, side the tailback. Number three calls for the ball, 20 seconds to go. He claps his hands, there's the snap, fakes the handoff, drops back, middle rushes five. Goes up to the right, under to rest at the 49-yard line. The catch once again by number 25, Luke Timian. That is the game of four. Tackle was by, did you see he got that tackle? Yeah, Antoine Brooks on the stop. What do you think of the development of number 25 for Maryland, Antoine Brooks? Aggression out the door, really good player. Think I think he's got a chance Ramsey to get pans it off. Up the middle gain of about three or four. It's going to bring up a third and three. 13.06 to go in the first. This is the first Indiana possession. It's third down. And you can hear the bell tolling it in the background. Tight end of the near side, receiver to the top, two to the bottom. Uh, Ramsey looks right, then floats left. Floats it out over the head. She makes a beautiful catch, chips it to himself, and falls at the Maryland 39 on the left side across the numbers, and guessed with a first down. Wide open on the out route was the running back, just made the amazing catch. Maryland able to apply pressure. And, uh, Ramsey throws, it across, Ramsey throws it across the left hand, incomplete second and ten. Number 20 is having a great start, and that is Cole Gester running back, a sophomore, but he's a red shirt, Lindhurst, Ohio, Book St. Edward High School. Man, leaving the quick slant open on that last play again, Ramsey just unable to make the throw second and ten. 12-23 to go in the first, tight end the left, three receivers to the top, guesses the tailback to Ramsey's right, and off goes that way, stuffed by number eight, number 50, MB Tanya, number five, Savon Walker, and number eight, Kingsley O'Para brings up third, I'm going to go with third and nine, they might have third and ten, it's a, it's a great chance to get off the field here, still on your own 40, where a lot of defenses are able to protect it. I go with the pressure, I've got to get pressure here, can't let Ramsey have to, um, 
three receivers to the right of the formation, one to the left. Indiana moving right to left in front of us at the Maryland 39, third and 10. Ramsey claps, it looks like number one might run outside. For Maryland, they call him outside, he gets the sack. Number one is Maryland's full start. This, this play's going to come back. Jermaine Carter, Jermaine Carter took the snap, and they called it on him. It is it's going to be a third and five coming up here. Wow. They had him. Uh, they had him because he jumped the snap. He got right around the left tackle. But uh, here we go again, third and five. It is third and five now from the 34. 11 39 to go in the first. This drive started at the Indiana 25. Maryland lines up four across the front. Watch the quarterback draw here, five wide. Maryland, it looks like six defensive backs with a middle linebacker. Maryland's oh, outside again. again. It's a free play. Throws the deep down the right sideline. What a touchdown, Indiana! Deep down the right sideline. And Simi has a touchdown. Two Maryland players are off sides. That is a 34-yard bomb. Outside the right numbers, between the numbers and the sideline, the ball was caught at about the one for a touchdown. The penalty is declined. It is six nothing Hoosiers over the Terps. 11 18 to go in the first place. And we started today on the Sports David on 1300 CBS Sports Radio saying Maryland couldn't just come out and give up a touchdown. Well, guess what happened? Oh, they gave up a touchdown. Now it's how you respond. The offensive possession coming up, you just you can't throw an interception and deep in your own territory or have a fumble. You've got to respond here. Griffin Oaks knocks it through. It's close. This is Wayne Vinyl and with Mason the intern. We will be back as the fans start to boo here in College Park. It is 7-0 Hoosiers.